Welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the ZOHD or Zod Dart 250. Before I get into the content, I do need to let you know this video is sponsored by Banggood, who sent this ZOHD Dart for review. As Banggood and I have worked together over the past couple weeks bringing products out to you for review, one of the things I've realized is they actually carry a pretty big stock of RC products. Not only do they have this little Zod Dart 250, but they carry a full lineup of other FPV airframes from Zod. So if you're in the market for this type of equipment, make sure you give them a look. It's very nice of them to send this type of thing out so we can get a first look and give you guys access to it before you break out your checkbook and write a check to buy this yourself. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to show you what's going on. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I picked this. As you guys know, one of my primary passions in radio control is flying FPV. I've always loved it. And this little airplane does a couple of unique little things. Number one, it comes in under 250 grams of weight all up which allows it to get past the registration requirements and it really lets you fly it anywhere because it's considered a toy. But Zod actually designed this to be a very serious FPV airframe. I wanted to point out that the whole concept in this particular airframe and one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I picked this for review is because it's in that sub 250 weight class and I wanted to see just how competent an airplane in that weight class could be. And I'm going to put some reference stuff up here in just a minute so you can get an idea of what we're talking about in terms of size. But let's put it this way, one wing half is not much bigger than my hand. Another reason I picked this one is because I thought this might be a very good beginner kit. And let me explain myself on that. If you're interested in learning how to fly FPV, one of the reasons I considered this a reasonably good starting kit is because of the equipment that comes with it. To begin with, this airplane comes equipped with a Zod Copilot Light. The thing about the Zod Copilot Light is it has a very minimal set of configuration requirements. It comes with a hardware board that connects to the computer to let you do things like adjust your gains, but it also comes with a GPS so you can do things like return to home and one other really interesting characteristics of this particular flight computer is that it's got launch assist and my expectation without actually having flown one is that putting it in launch assist mode will let you get this little airplane off the ground because it is a chuck airplane. There's no landing gear on this. You have to throw it and then you're immediately going on the sticks to fly. So I think when you start looking at the totality of what they have in mind with the flight computer, the launch assist, the return to home, the minimal configuration, I think that stuff is all compelling if you're a new FPV flyer. There are certain flight computers out there that require you to do things like install drivers and download software and buy USB interfaces and do all kinds of soldering and wiring. It can get a little daunting if you're not familiar with the process and things that are required to make an FPV system work together. So this is really designed to be a beginner oriented system. And again, we'll open the box and take a look at that in just a little bit, but I want to keep moving on with the plane. There's another really interesting characteristic about this one that I haven't seen before, and that's that the flight computer doesn't contain an OSD, but the camera does. So they brand this VC400 as the on-screen display system, which will give you information about flight time and battery voltage. It doesn't give you all of the artificial horizon and altitude information from my understanding. It's a very simple OSD, but it gives you a minimal set of on-screen display requirements in order to manage an FPV flight. So this is not a full-fledged OSD, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be because the idea behind this plane is really more of a proximity flyer. This is not intended to be a long-range plane because it only supports a 1000 milliamp hour battery. So it's, I don't believe it's really meant to be a long-range or long-distance flyer. Okay, let's jump back into the specs a little bit. I want to wrap up the numbers and then we'll start looking at the equipment. This is a 22 inch wingspan. It's 14 inches long. And the, as I mentioned, the all up weight with the FPV system included and the battery is under 250 grams. That's the designed all up weight. In terms of equipment, they give you two different options. They say you can run this with a 2S or a 3S battery and they give you props for both. So they give you a two bladed prop if you want to run 2S and they give you a three bladed prop if you want to run 3S. And the capacity is between 900 and 1500. One of the real interesting things that I saw on the product page is that apparently you can fly this thing successfully with 18650 3500 milliamp cells. So two of those and apparently they work that works in this plane. And if you don't know it, those cells are about four bucks a piece. So you could do something like go to Amazon and get a battery tray, cut the wires off, install an XT30, and you got yourself an 18650 battery pack. Just throwing it out there. Okay, let's dive into the airframe just a little bit. I'm holding in my hand the fuselage and 
as you can see, it is EPO foam. It's got a little fiberglass, or it actually looks like a carbon weave pull tab on the top to pull the canopy off. And there's the area for your flight computer and the battery. And it does look relatively spacious. I'm, I'm a little surprised for such a small plane that they've got so much room up there for the flight computer and the battery. So that looks pretty good. And then as you can see up front, there's a compartment for the all-in-one camera. I'll get that out in just a little bit and set it in the airframe so you can get a feel for what that looks like. But that's the front layout. One of the interesting little tidbits on this plane is on the back, you can see this hole in the back that's designed to allow you access to your ESC wiring while you're setting up. Well, there's no EPO there. Instead, they give you this little 3M tissue tape that goes on the top. These slots pop out and that allows airflow. So an interesting little technique on weight management. I've never seen anything like that before. On the back of the plane, there's a 30 amp ESC that's already installed and ready to go. I was really impressed with the size of this thing. You can see my thumb right there. This ESC is not much bigger than my thumb, but it's pre-wired with an XT30 and a JST connector up front to support the camera. And then on the back is that 1406 2600 kV motor, already mounted and ready to go. All right, I wanted to bring the radio in just to give you guys a frame of reference because I think everybody's very familiar with the how big these radios are. So I just wanted to give you a frame of reference so you can get an idea on the wing of what we're talking about. So there's the wing. It is slightly longer than the radio, but not by much. This is a flying wing configuration, so the only two servos you have are right here. And notice they also put protection bumps. It's molded in EPO foam to protect the servo arms when you do your belly landings. And while we're on the subject of belly landings, you guys know I normally don't open the hardware pack, but I opened this one and I'm kind of glad I did because they mentioned that they have Teflon tape that goes on the bottom of the airframe, and that's what this is. And when you rub your hand on that, it's very, very slick. So this tape is meant to be placed in strategic places on the bottom of the fuselage, and I think on the bottom of the wings. But it's a very, very slick material. It's interesting. It's interesting. I've never had anything quite like that on a plane. I've had plastic glue-on parts, but nothing that looked like a adhesive back Teflon. It's very cool, very neat looking. The vertical stabilizers, I'm gonna point out because there's a nice contrast here. These get affixed to the airplane with double-sided tape. So one side is already taped on to the vertical stabilizer, and then the other side, you just peel the backing off and you slide it on the plane and that's it. That's what holds it on. So no hardware, they're minimizing hardware. And I'm sure it'll do the job because there's not really any longitudinal force really that's gonna blow these off. I mean, that's the profile, right? So I think, it, I'm sure it's gonna be effective. I'll keep an eye on that, maybe a little dab of hot glue just for safety, but it's an interesting approach. And again, I've never seen anything like that. For me, that's a new build technique. I'm just not familiar with this concept of using double-sided tape to fix my wing surfaces to the fuselage or the air, or the airframe. All right, other than the scale, here's a look at the wing so you can get an idea of the condition it comes in. By the way, this airplane came in a box that's just a little bit bigger than a shoe box that you get when you buy a pair of shoes at the store, and everything inside was bubble wrapped. So everything looks very clean and tidy. I don't see any issues at all. Servos are already connected. There is no shrink tubing on the clevises, so I will be putting that on, especially for an FPV plane, I'll be putting that on. And then also you wanna make sure you give these servos a good check and make sure they're in there. These feel pretty good. Okay, so that's the port wing and everything looks good there. Here's a look at the starboard wing. There's the top. And there's the bottom. Again, servos already installed and connected. That's it actually saves some work, you know, when, when they do that. So everything looks good there, no complaints at all. It looks like it's in good nick, as our British friends would say. And here's the carbon fiber wing tube for the wings. So just a tiny little thing, but I've already test fit it and it, it locks in there just fine. Okay, let's get the airframe together and look at some of the electronics. Okay, here's a look at the camera, and this is what's known as an all-in-one unit. So it has a combined VTX and camera together. One thing I'm not sure of, and I don't see a spec on the product page is whether or not it's CCD or CMOS. My guess is it's probably CMOS. They do say it's a 600 TV line camera. It uses the 5.8 gigahertz spectrum with 40 channels and up to 400 milliwatts. It has options including 0.1 milliwatt, which is what you'd use for testing, 25 milliwatts, 200 and 400. The combined weight of this unit is only eight grams and the size is 24 by 15 by 10 and it has a 120 degree field of view. So there's the all-in-one unit, and boy, I'll tell you what, that's small. I mean, look, again, there, look at my thumb. You know, this is a small little device, very tiny, very lightweight. You can tell these guys were very focused on weight when they put this design together. They say this has an optional dipole or cloverleaf antenna. This one comes with a cloverleaf, and I don't see a dipole antenna in the box anywhere. 
So I'm not sure what they mean by that, but that is my preference. That's the one I'd rather have anyway. And again, this is the unit that displays the on-screen display information that you'll want to see, including your power on time and input voltage, so you know when it's time to land the plane. And I do consider voltage to be bare bones minimum. You have to have that. Next up is the Zod Copilot Lite. And before you ask, this is only for fixed wing. I read some of the specifications before I started the first look, and it does specify that this is for fixed wing aircraft only. It's not supported for quads, and I assume it means it's not supported for helicopters either. And again, you can, you can see that there's a real attention to detail on weight management. So this is the control board that I mentioned. I think this plugs in temporarily while you set your gains, and then once they're set, I believe this disconnects. I'll have to verify that, but I believe that's how it works. And then here's the GPS unit. Again, very tiny, very lightweight, minimal interfacing. So you can tell by looking at this flight computer, they were very focused on weight management. It's got some PWM outputs for your servos. It's got PW input for your receiver if you're using a PWM receiver. S bus is on this side, and then this last connector is for the settings control board. And that's it. Very, very simple design. Minimalistic and very lightweight. Here's a quick look at the wiring harness, and again, very minimal, very minimal. It just has plastic JST connectors on both ends, and there's very little in terms of anything superfluous. Not Nothing. No heat shrink, no sleeves, no boots, no plastic that's not needed, nothing. Very lightweight. And then if you're using a PWM radio, this would be the connector you'd use for that. There's also a screwdriver in the box, a decal, and some mounting tape, and that's it. I wanted to give you an idea what that flight computer looks like inside the fuselage, and I mentioned that I would show you what the camera looks like on the front too. So there's the camera, that fits in there nice and tidy. The wires go back, just like I said, to the ESC. I'm kind of curious about that because you can get some noise off of an ESC, but what I will say is this looks to be an engineered solution, so I'm going to try it the way they recommend it out of the book, but I'm very curious to know how that's going to perform. And then they also have this little camera cover that looks like it needs a little surgery to work around that antenna. It just doesn't fit. <laughs> so I think you have to either, I think you got to cut a hole in it and slide it around the back of the antenna, but that's fine. That's typical in FPV. You're constantly making little adjustments like that to accommodate your hardware. No big deal. But anyway, yeah, there's the camera inside the airframe and I'm sure a little hot glue or some double-sided mounting tape will hold that in there just fine. And here are the instructions for assembling the plane. Very basic set of instructions. I think they make some assumptions about your ability to, to understand what has to go where. But I have to admit, it's a very simple wiring setup. And that's one of the things that attracted me to this plane, is that it's an engineered solution. All of these components were designed to work together. And last up are the graphics. A couple of little decals you can put on the plane if you want to, and they give you this nice little silver and black one you may, might put on your field box or on the back of your radio or something like that. That wraps up my first look at the Zod 250. I have to admit, this is going to be a new experience for me. It's a very small airframe. It's got an engineered solution with the all-in-one camera, the transmitter, and the flight computer. You know, for ready-made quads, that's not uncommon. But for ready-made airplanes, that is a little unusual. I'm not used to getting kits that are intended to be an all-in-one arrangement. So I'll be very curious to see how this performs out of the box. I'm not going to add any of my own hardware, at least not yet. I might, other than the receiver and the battery, I'm going to go with box stock. I'm going to go with what they recommend. I'm going to use their camera, their computer, and I want to see how it does. And I'll let you guys know. You know, I'll give you some first-hand impressions. But I have to tell you, after flying that wing simulator that I, I did the video on, I'm kind of getting that hankering to be in FPV again and to fly FPV again. And this looks like it might be a really fun little plane. And the cool part is, if it all works together the way I think it will, it can be flown anywhere. Well, that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. If you can take a moment and hit the thumbs up button, that'd be awesome. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links and my t-shirt store. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.